What's the difference between transmittance and absorbance? Welcome to Old School Chemistry. Glad that you're here. Honestly, they are related, super close to each other, but in spectrophotometry, they are considered different things. So let me show you the nuances between them. Uh, now, remember when we're talking about transmittance and absorbance, is light being absorbed by a sample? Here's my little diagram for you. Let's pretend that this is our cuvette and I have a blue solution, maybe a beautiful copper or two sulfate. We're going to put light in, it's going to go through that sample. That's called the instant light, so the light before it hits the sample. And I'm going to re uh, represent that with an A naught. The light goes through and you know what happens. Those, those compounds are going to absorb. The ions are going to absorb the light. So the light that comes out is less, it's less light. And that's called the transmitted light, the light after the light travels through the sample. So notice the light that we begin with, that instant light, is always going to be greater than the transmitted light because some of that energy was absorbed by the ions. Now the difference between the two. So transmittance, this is the fraction, or you can do it as a percent, of light that passes through the sample. So really easily, it's just the light that we have at the end, the transmitted light, divided by the incident light, the original light. What is the percentage left over? Did half of that energy, half of that light, was it absorbed? That would be a 0.5 or 50%. Uh, now, I want to give you this big takeaway. If you increase transmittance, that means more light goes through the sample, that means that you decrease the light absorbed. So a high transmittance, a lot of light went through, not very much light was absorbed. And if we graph this absorbance versus transmittance, you can see that it is a, a negative slope, okay? An inverse relationship. Now, absorbance, and this is usually, honestly, uh, what we measure, this is what I have my students measure, is absorbance when we do our uh, spectrophotometry. Absorbance is the measure of light absorbed. How much light was absorbed? Check it out. Here's your definition. Absorbance is the negative log of transmittance. Now, you'll see this a couple of different ways based on your professor, based on your textbook. So I wanted to give you every possible way I could think that you would see this. Uh, so absorbance is the negative log of transmittance. I just broke apart transmittance. I took this, put it here. So the negative log of the transmitted light divided by the incident light, amount of light that comes out compared to the amount of light that we put in. Uh, now, you guys know with logs, if I change this from a negative to a, negative to a positive, that reciprocates of what I have inside of my log. And sometimes you'll see this in books. The positive log of the incident light, what you begin with, divided by the transmitted light. And often in books, you'll see it as positive log of one over transmittance. When that reciprocates, T is reciprocated, that's when you have the A naught over the A. It's all the same thing. It's just a mathematical manipulation. So if you see any of those, you'll go, oh yes, absorbance is just the negative log of the transmittance. Now what this does when we take the log, as you increase the absorbance, you increase the light absorbed. So think this out with me. When I have my light going in, it's absorbed by those ions. The more ions I have, the greater the concentration of that sample, the more light that's absorbed, the more energy that's absorbed. And that's what absorbance gives us. It's very intuitive. And that's why I have my students focus on absorbance. The more concentrated the solution, the greater the amount of light absorbed, the greater the absorbance. And so this is really honestly what we usually use for bare Lambert plots. And you can watch that video if you have questions on that. As you increase absorbance, you increase the concentration and vice versa. As you have a higher concentration, you might have more light absorbed, a higher absorbance. This is usually where we live, but you need to understand the difference between those two um, to really fully grasp that final graph that we use for spectrophotometry. Well, great job. You are doing so well. Look at what you're learning. I'm so proud of you. Thank you for joining me. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.